Bigger than that case. Give me some outside. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Bigger Than Capes. This is episode 67. I am your luscious host, Will, and I'm joined by Matt. Your glamorous assistant. My glamorous assistant. Ready to get chopped in half. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> as long as you as long as like you actually make sure to put me back together. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, like I, I promise nothing. I'm gonna say right at the top, we're here today to talk about 2000 AD Regened Volume One. Yeah, 2000 AD is like attempt at a new all ages project, like a their traditional sort of anthology style, but with a kind of focus on making it more kid friendly or let's say family friendly mm-hmm. but before we get into that do you want to have a quick catch up well that's, that's it that's why i wanted to get that out of the way early doors so we didn't forget <clears throat> and then uh we can get into talking nonsense and see how much of it stays in the episode <laughs> oh, that all comes down to zach yeah so probably not none of it <laughs> um something i have uh, watched recently um which has been very very excellent is dark on netflix it's a uh, a german sci-fi show about a majority of it about time travel but about a town that's kind of stuck in a time loop um and it's i'm not doing it much of a service because i think it's good to come in pretty cold um it's a bit of a sort of mystery box tv show but it's three series long um it's nice and self-contained it's got a it like it lands the ending i think quite satisfyingly um it provides answers for its mysteries rather than just more questions which is and pretty it, good it's complete and say? it is complete yeah it exists as a complete thing i think because it's german um and i wouldn't recommend the dubs especially oh uh, they, they're they're oh, no they're, they're often just a horror show uh, the subtitles are very good but yeah you know if, if, if people attempted to go i mean you, you know make your own choice um but I think also because it's German, it probably gets sh- pushed down in the Netflix shuffle. Mm. Um, but deserves a shout out. It was, it was excellent. Yeah. Again, I'm still playing a lot of uh, Elden Ring. Yeah. It's still. How many hours are you in now? Um. Let's let 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 me go into my Steam and check. Because uh, I I'm expecting that I'm going to be a little embarrassed. Um, <laughs> uh, that's not as bad as I thought. Only about a hundred hours. Only only a hundred hours. Good. Um, yeah, that's that's actually less than I expected. Um, especially considering, like, as a kid, my Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Game files used to be close to 200. Like four years. Out, just solid. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So Elden Ring. Um, I'm you still sure in, you still enjoying it after 100 hours? Yeah. Still got a lot left to do. I want to play through it. Like I'm playing through it again as like a different character, uh, trying a different build, all that sort of good stuff. You know, all the traditional right. Soulsborne things that you know. Are, great fun have i been reading anything good i've finally almost completed my evan dorkin collection uh which i'm very happy about like um, yeah i just need like the most recent beasts of burden volume and i think that that'll be the majority of his stuff that's been available outside of like a flea market Uh, (laughs) that's the juicy stuff though yeah yeah so uh i'm pretty happy with that like yeah i got the zach managed to get me a copy of the eltonville club collection that came out a few years ago that i was unemployed at the time that it came out so yeah one of those things where it's like i if i don't get this right now i'm i'm never gonna have it 
So <laughs> it's uh, now or never. Yeah, so that's that's filled that up, and I'm pretty pretty pleased. I remember you saying that you've been playing Bloodborne uh, on mm. like a recent episode. Like, how uh, how are you finding it? Where are you up to? Well, in my in my personal game, I uh, I finished it. Um, good, good. Not the DLC. Mine. No. The, the first version of the game I got was just the base version. But I started it again with a couple of mates who have never played from soft game before, and we're doing a, a classic pass the controller mm. playthrough. And obviously, it's taken us ages. Like we're it, we're doing it over three weeks. Yes. Um, <clears throat> just on just on weekends, like a day a week. <laughs> Um, and I reckon we're probably a good two thirds of the way through. We've got the DLC yet to do, which I've never done, which is quite exciting. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward. I will get around to Elden Ring at some point, but I can't. Well, you've still got it, Sekiro. That's it. I can't <laughs> not do them in order. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So it might be a while before I get around to. To Elden yeah. Ring, but I think I'll probably play most of the FromSoft games with these guys. Like I like it's it's, it's, the way it's it. nice. That's like it it's that sounds like something that would take me back to being a kid. Yeah, it reminds me of the N sixty four days of playing yeah. <clears throat> Mario sixty four and Ocarina of Time, and just just passing the controller and like backseat gaming. Oh yeah, my brothers, good. like my brother and I had uh, like. We got uh, a 64 for like Christmas, like a few years into its lifespan, mm-hmm. and um, we couldn't agree on who got to name. Even though there were three save files on Ocarina of Time, um, the the name, well, it was it wasn't like we could have one because then we'd see how to do the dungeons already, uh, and it'd be like <laughs> cheating. So we had the one. And for, and it just ended up. Of, of course, the name for the for the character in it was no longer Link. It was T and M for Tom and Matt, um, <laughs> because otherwise uh, it wouldn't be fair. So yeah, we just had to keep passing it back and forth, um, which got incredibly confusing when it got to things like the Water Temple. Oh goodness! Um, well, that's just a confusing temple. Yeah, with all of the like shifting levels and stuff, and walking in not knowing if anything had been done uh, and stuff. Yeah, uh, but yours sounds less hellish. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think this is feels like an idealized version of what that was. Obviously, when you're <laughs> kids, you're arguing and chucking stuff, and now we just quite pleasantly have a cup of tea and pass the controller to get smushed by a boss again. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of other reading, though, I started uh, for uh, for a future episode. Uh, is is the vernacular to say spy cross family? Oh, so so. I I'm not one hundred percent sure because because so here's the here's the thing. So you're aware of the series like Hunt, uh, Hunter uh, Hunter X Hunter. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not called Hunter X Hunter. It's called Hunter Hunter. The right. X there. Um, it's a silent X. It's a silent X. Um, <laughs> it's there for sty- It's there for stylistic things. So that I I so I I am never sure whether it's Spy X Family mm. or Spy Family. Um, <laughs> who <Good>. knows? <laughs> when we come to the episode, we'll have to. We'll, just we'll have, have to done some multiple. research. We'll yeah, we'll 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 say like, and Zach, if you can please fill in the correct one here. Here's some readings: Spy X family, <laughs> Spy family, Spy Cross family. But I've definitely seen yeah the X being meaning cross in a lot of yes. like video game things. Yeah, so I, I sort of presumed it was a similar, but. Um, the truth is, yeah. we don't know. Like, you know, ballistic, <laughs> uh, ballistic v, uh, uh, v seven. Uh, no, the um, it's yeah. I, I, how, how are you enjoying it? Good so far. Obviously, I don't want to, uh, you know, get, no, get spoiled, too much into but... it as we've got an episode to talk about it. But yeah, yeah, so far, so good. I just, now I just need to get you to watch some of the anime. Uh, if it's available to me easily. 
It then is. I'm, I will. I will hook you up. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be your hook up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, shall we get on to uh, the topic du jour? The book in question, indeed. Yours was much fancier. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is 2000 AD regened volume one. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, it's an all ages book. It's still in that anthology style that 2000 AD is normally in, and it's still headed by uh, the toughest lawman, Dread, but this time uh, the young cadet Dread. Yes. Um, it first appeared in a free comic book day issue in 2018, which I regretfully say I didn't get, mm. um, and then appeared in Prog 2130. Um, and since then has appeared, I think, four times a year, every year. And I think there's another one in two issues time as well. So we're up to, uh, I think we're up to 2236. And I think 2238 is another regime. Yeah. One. So there, it has been, it must be successful. Yeah, it, um, it seems to be doing fairly well. Like they've just released, yeah, like a third volume. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I think the stuff that's coming out now will be what it what ultimately makes up the fourth volume. Yeah, it's uh, and and it's 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 nice to see. I'm a big fan of like the the all ages anthology format. It's we're both old enough now to have uh, like friends who have kids, like families mm-hmm. and stuff like. And I will often go out of my way to like recommend this sort of thing to them like whether it be like uh this or like the phoenix um or like for the brief period like uh it existed like dfc um that sort of stuff like Mm -hmm. because i think that it's really important uh stuff like for comics um because it shows a wider variety yeah um, definitely. of like of, of what comics can be it gives them a, a an entrance to a sort of bigger world mm-hmm. of comics than you would get from like i mean i think in the comics landscape 2000 ad generally offers something quite different that yes. only sort of um Metal Hurlant and what's the American version? Oh, God. heavy metal. Yeah, the sort the, of yeah. You know, they they sort of do a similar thing, and it's um, very much akin to like a lot of the shonen. Um, yes. Signing and what have you in Japan, um, but 2000 AD has grown up with its audience, and I yes, think absolutely. It, it's no longer aimed at children in the main no. comic, so in order to get new audience, is quite it's quite hard. And, um, and whilst like whilst a lot of it is still approachable, like mm-hmm. Dread's been going for how long now? Like uh, it started, I think, in seventy seven. Yeah, it's like it's like nearly fifty years. Um. It's stuff where it's like most progs you can still hop onto and go like, okay, but sometimes you'll look at it and go like, wait, why is this judge? Why is this chapter about this judge being chased down for corruption and dealing with like internal affairs (laughs) and stuff like, and it's the start of like a new mega epic. It still works in arcs. Um... It, It does, but it's like, it's still fairly approachable most of the time. I think they tend to do quite a good job of creating jumping on points where they will mm. find a nexus of where all like all the stories will be mostly ones. You yes. might just get the tail end of one or two things, but um, I started with uh, 2200 as my first prog, mm. um, and I think that was like a special edition because again that that started about three or four stories. Give me a good a good yeah. in. Um, but as you said, it's it's aimed at an older audience. It's pretty hard to get kids interested. 
um, I, in this sort of thing. And I think this regene is a interesting approach I, to take. Yeah, especially because like it doesn't sh- like it doesn't shy away from violence or anything in it. It like it has like my it, my 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 worry with it initially was that it was going to like have to, it that it was going to have to figure out ways to try and make certain characters too kind of like it was going to have to remove too much like too much of the kind of defining edges yeah sort of deep defang the- but i'd say it does a very good job like because dread for the most part like take like, like dread as an example is mm-hmm. dread is probably the the character who has the most um like of the of the segments yeah yeah definitely uh, in, most of the, in the in the volume like there's four or five like they decide uh to go basically back to the beginning of uh dread at like the academy mm-hmm uh, uh, training with like training with Rico, and I was I was so happy when Morph was there. I was like <laughs> I was like oh it's good on Morph. Um, <laughs> like, um, I uh, yeah I I, but they they manage to like because dread it's silly it is like it yeah is is the thing like. It's yeah, it's 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 satire of like of fascism and all that sort of horror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um and it's inherently already silly and funny. Mm-hmm. Like all they just need to do some of the times is just make it just approachable. Yeah. And they do a really good job of that. Like each of the progs uh is entire is so far like entirely self contained mm-hmm. um and like like dread has always done sometimes will like deal with a thing of the moment like there's a prog uh in there about like a like a Godzilla versus Kong um like Godzilla. monster like kaiju movie um uh, and stuff like and it's it's really fun like Mm -hmm. i i like they were probably my favorite uh thing throughout all of uh like throughout all of this first collection um because they feel they feel the i don't know i don't know if i'd say they feel the most like them like themselves because everything manages to retain its character yeah it's sort of to, core identity yeah um mm. to some degree uh or like to some greater or lesser degree like there's not that much change done like don't you i don't think you're necessarily going to see um like you're going to see the adventures of of baby slain um <laughs> yeah yeah there are some characters who are probably not going to cross over yeah like but but they've they've done a good job mm-hmm. overall yeah, yeah. Um, of of this like and like like I was trying to say they they keep enough kind of enough of the violence yeah um, inherent in a lot of it um, for it to still kind of be engaging and not feel over sanitized. Yeah, I think they get around it in quite a few clever ways. Like in the first issue, um, I think one shot is fired and Dredd just shoots a tire out. Yes. Flips the car over, everybody's fine. They get arrested. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> all it's good. cool, it's entertaining. Like, you're still going, oh, wow, he did a cool thing. And like, you still you, you still go like, oh, the, you know, uh, the lawgiver's cool. Oh, yeah, and then Cadet Radcliffe from Britsit. Yeah, I always love Britsit stuff. Oh, I, um, yeah, I, I'm always happy when something like Britsit or Hondo shoots a shoots a gun out of somebody's hand, and that's about it. And uh, yeah. so they, I think you know, they they get the action without the violence. 
Um, yeah, and, and a lot of the time they're going, oh no, this thing's too tough for our lawn. <laughs> lawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Dredd just punches a dinosaur. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's okay if they're dinosaurs, you can punch them. And yeah, Dredd as you mentioned, a body. with like Grudzilla, it's probably the one that's most, that feels the most um, satire y. Yes. Um, lampooning sort of method acting and just yeah. filmmaking and celebrity in general and um it being a bit of a twat for one's art <laughs> yes like um, that one is definitely one like is one that if if i had a kid i would want to read with them yeah i think it's probably the the strongest story wise although i i like the art of the other three um mm. this is actually I, I need we should get this out of the way um there's a lot of names here, so yes, like I'm just going to sort of try and smash through it a little bit. Um, so, Cadet Dread, Coming to America, was written by Matt Smith, art by Neil Googe, colours by Gary Caldwell, and letters by Annie pa- Parkhurst. Parkhurst. Yeah, I always want like art is so so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this it captures like. So, like it, it, it does a really good job of cap- capturing the 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 the, the silhouette mm-hmm. of uh of of like your of of your archetypal judge and of dread and like still is weird is still capable of being weird enough to do like the 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 extra dimensional aliens the di- like the, the the massive dinosaurs mm-hmm. um it's it's really good fun and the colors are so are, are often just so bright yeah and it's not the same gloom that mega city yeah. is often often portrayed in um i always even when i annie parkhouse does a lot of lettering for 2018 and mm. every time i read her name in my own head <laughs> i say annie pankhurst and it's just it's <laughs> Just not her name. It, it's I'm Manchester. Sorry. It's Manchester. You think about yeah. first. Um, um, but yeah, any other ones? I mean, Matt Smith wrote Crowd Control. Uh, Neil Googe also did the art for that one. The colours were Len O'Grady and Sam Gretton on letters. Grudzilla was written by Chris Weston with art by Chris Weston. Colours by Chris Blythe and letters by Annie Parkhouse. Got it right. And uh, lastly, School Trip was written by Rory McConville. Art by Ilias Kiriatsis. Colours by Gary Caldwell and letters by, again, Annie Parkhouse. So, yeah, like, these ones are, like I said, probably just the highlight mm-hmm. um, of it. Um, I, mean, I, like that they, I like that they use a lot of their classic characters. Um, yeah. And, and sort of bring that, you know, re, re... They're not reboots as such. Like, they're just sort no. of re... They're just, castings. Like, and and off and they they just have the feel of they're just like stories that you just never saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they fit. I as far as I can tell, they fit pretty well. Just into what? Yeah, in into the into the standard sort of timeline. Yeah, well, um, I mean, when by the time you meet Dread, he is a full judge. Yeah, in his incarnation. Um, there's been some good stuff about uh, a story called Dreadnoughts about like creating the, the judge program in the first oh, place. Yes. It's been good. So they've been, they've been feeding in bits of their history, but yeah, so far they've done it very sort of elegantly, I think. And in this, you get some future suggestions of, you know, Rico is uh, a bit reckless and, you know, kind of gets dread in trouble. Uh, mm hinting to you know where that character sort of ends up yes um but also anderson i've always loved judge anderson because it's the same world from a just incredibly different perspective than yeah Ted. it's it's a like it it it's it's a character who's actually allowed to have emotions yeah so um, it'd be nice yeah and 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 more question there were like it's the whole point of the Psy judges mm-hmm. um is that yeah they're just sort of they they're that they are a much more human 
uh, face, um, like and and human perspective for the reader. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh. I I always appreciate like having them around, and there's a I I in in the uh, Anderson story we get in this. It's mm-hmm. it's an okay Judge Anderson story, but with a really good joke at the end. <laughs> Um, like, I, 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 I love the little joke of, like, Anderson having, like, just talking with the other side judge and, and being like, you know, she's given, she's given the little girl who she's saving an inspiring speech and everything about, like, no, I I look at you and I know you're strong enough to take (laughs) what's going on out there. And it's like, oh my God, that was my fifth that was like the fifth time I've given that speech today, please. Like, nope. I do not know if I have another one in me. Nope, more to go. Keep going. <laughs> Keep moving. Yeah. Um, but just like, while it, it's... Sorry, go on. I just said, just while we're on it, the story's called Spellcraft. Uh, it's scripted by Alec Worley, art by PJ Holden, no relation. Colours by Gary Caldwell and letters by Ellie DeVille. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I quite like this story. I think you're right. Like, it's compared to full judge anderson stories um it's not you know it's not wildly out there um but i like the kind of the knight style representation of the judge armor although that's uh, a nice touch i think the art in general and you're right the sort of punchline of it all it's a good it it it's what yeah it sort of makes it it for me that one yeah brought it up a good degree um, alongside Anderson, you've got Rogue Trooper and Strontium Dog, another pair of like classic 2000 AD characters. Yeah. Um, I for- I'm a big I'm a big Stront Dog fan. Mm-hmm. Um, like I still have my Search and Destroy Agency T-shirt that I got 15 or 16 years ago. Nice. Um, that's like so bad that you like so badly worn out at this point that you can barely <laughs> see um the print um like the print on it anymore uh, that's proper i think i think 2000 ad would respect you for that yeah i think that i got that at the at the same uh time that i got that that i had a lovely conversation with brian talbot about um <laughs> nemesis the warlock and he, <laughs> And he drew me, uh, like he signed uh, one of my Nemesis the Warlock uh, collections with, like, in gold ink, a drawing of Nem of like Nemesis with his signature being the smoke coming out of his nostrils. Oh, that's very, and I was like, that cool. rules. Thank you so much. And yeah. also, then he was try. It was when around the time that Granville uh, had started coming out, uh, and he said to me about like. Oh, so I'm doing this new book. <gasps> Rupert the Bear's in it. Uh, it, was, it was so charming. He's the nicest <laughs> man if you ever have the opportunity to meet him. That was like the first time I I ever had the chance. And every time since, I'm always just like, oh, be my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever have the pleasure, <clears throat> I'll look forward to it. Yeah. Um, this particular Strontium dog yes. story. Trial run again, scripted by Alec Wally, art by Ben Wilshire, and letters by Simon Boland. What did you make of this? Um, eh, I I didn't care too strongly either way. Um, like it's 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 kind of <sighs> it's the same thing that they're trying to do with Dread in here, which is like. It's Johnny Alpha before he's before he becomes like a Strontian dog, mm-hmm. before he becomes like a bounty hunter, um, and he's you know like he's still just like a kid, like a hard scrabble trying having to take a test to to earn his license basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I don't know if they needed to do this. Because sure. I feel like, uh, like if if you're if your all of your stuff is going to be 
early, early, like Johnny Alpha stuff, pre kind of where we meet him in the first, uh, in like the, the, the first stories, you kind of, you're missing some of the really fun things. Mm. And I know with Dread, the fun of it is that it's Dread learning mm. to be Dread. Yeah. But here, I, I don't know if it worked for me because like, I want, like Wolf Sternhammer there. I I want like I want the Gronk. Um like all these little things that I think would work really like that that do work really well mm-hmm. um for like kids and yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Absolutely. You know, a time displaced Viking um and and a weird little alien who pluralizes things and has like heart attacks um, <laughs> and a horror mouth in his stomach. Yeah, like they're 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 really fun and things that kids like would find would find silly and like in a good way. Mm-hmm. I hope at least I'm not a kid anymore. Uh, though. Yeah, though I do have the heart of one in my in my <laughs> fridge. No. Um, yeah. So I mean, I I think it's a it's perfectly serviceable. That's it. I think it's a decent introduction to the character to sort of get an idea. If you don't know what a strontium dog is, um, you know, get the idea of, of his kind of servitude to it and etc. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's not it's not the most inspiring uh, of the stories or kind of amongst the funnest. I think the Rogue Trooper ones are a bit more successful for me. Yes, absolutely. Um, these have, uh, there are two issues, but they're all written, they're both written by Kevin Scott, art by Nick Roche, uh, colours by Abigail Bulmer, and letters by Simon Boland. Um, again, sort of, it doesn't seem to necessarily be going back to the early no, it, stages of uh, of Rogue Trooper. It's just kind of telling untold war stories as he marches his endless uh, march. Yeah. <laughs> and uh but I but I also think these give you good exposition on yeah. what rogue troopers are and what the world is and noughts and and southers and and yeah, southers and, and, and AI yeah and everything like a- absolutely while still giving you a pretty entertaining story in it as well. Yeah, exactly. Like I I liked these these were like fun and these were like particularly the second one um yeah like really fun and just captured captured kind of the quintessence Mm -hmm. um of like of it like at its basic at, at its most basic but still good enough like to be to, to, to kind of to, 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 to be a good introduction for a kid to the concept. Yeah. Um, and the fun thing with it is that it, it's, you know, it's in this ongoing weird war where basically if you can think of an idea of what a weapon, what could have been tried to be turned into a weapon, <laughs> that thing is out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, because the war has been going on so long. Um, so like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a good one to use for this. I think, Mm -hmm. I think it just fits the anthology format very well. It's like, it can packs, it can packs a lot into what amounts to probably five or six page stories. Yeah. And I think that the, that the kind of episodic format. I mean, admittedly, we've only seen a couple in here, but like the episodic format, rather than doing the kind of ongoing stories that it becomes kind of later mm-hmm. uh, with like Road Trooper and like with Dread and all that sort of stuff, like works very well as well. Like that again, every every issue can be a jumping on point at that point. Um, and the Road Trooper stuff yeah works great for that mm-hmm. um i i do love the the little baby gis 
Um, yeah, little green clones. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, and yeah, just again, just good fun. Um, all ages war comic. <laughs> Um, on the sort of flip side of those mostly kind of action-based things, um, there's an issue of the Gronk. Yes. The aforementioned Gronk. I... Uh, script by David Bailey, art by Rob Davis, and letters by Jim Campbell. I I like this. I do I, too. Like, I... Admittedly, I have... Like I already said, I have a, a fondness for the Gronk. Um, it's a weird, silly, like, alien, and just this little, just going like, oh, hey, let's do a little story about one of these weird, dumb little alien species that we have in our back pocket, um, that we can just go like, oh, let's, let's look at them having to deal with a problem, and they're not (laughs) good at dealing with problems. Um, Absolutely not. I think it rides an incredibly thin line between like fun absurdism and just being hugely irritating. Yes. And I do it just, it gets the right side of that line. I think for um, us, at least for us. Yeah. I can understand for others. He could just be the Jar Jar Binks of 2000 AD. Yeah. Um, although the Gronk are, uh, a species rather than a, a one. <laughs> yes, though, but, where, though, though there is a, canon, a canonical the Gronk. The yeah, and also what's the is he called like the sleepless Gronk? Oh, the, the yeah, the 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 one who stayed awake. Yeah, the Gronk who stayed awake. That's... Um, which is yeah, just a very like it's just it's just really fun to laugh like and 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 funny. Just getting, just it being like this great brave hero who manages to just not have a heart attack um, <laughs> and pass out um, during danger. So is able to tell the others who all did about what the threat actually is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a yeah. It's just silly and like great fun. I. Like, I don't need another Gronk's story. Uh, no, because no, I that, agree. Like, because I feel like you've gotten kind of the majority of what I need out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, just a- occasionally, just doing this sort of thing, like like they do at the end by bringing back Dr. and Quinch. Yeah. Um, just having every now and again going like, we're just going to uh, dig out this little, this thing that we like um, and do a story, like a single issue, like gag uh, story from these weird things. Mm-hmm. And then if you like them, you can pro- you can find stuff um, that, you know, that's got them in elsewhere. Yeah, I think you're right. And these, both of these stories, they ride that kind of silliness line. And I think they have diminishing returns. So if this was story after story yeah. um, of, of just kind of um, admittedly fun antics, it, it would just, yeah, it would dry up, wouldn't yeah. it? But um, if, like maybe once every year or so, or maybe every mm-hmm. two, like two or three years, like it went like, oh, let's do another little gronk's story because we've had a good idea yeah yeah um i'd be happy with that like that sort of thing where it's like they like i said they just have a a slot every now and then for mm-hmm. like a comedy a little comedy story with some of their with like some characters yeah i must say um dr and quinch uh hijack free comic book day it's written by Owen Johnson and Colin Bell, art by Indio, exclamation mm. mark, colours by Dom Regan, and letters by Colin Bell, um, not of Manchester City fame. <laughs> um, but uh, I actually found this a little less successful for me than The Gronk. I get that. Um, like, the, uh, like, it's not exactly sort of um, classic, the Iron Quinch, and in some ways, like some of the gags 
need you to know maybe a little bit more. Sure, need a bit of background um, on him. On them, and there's a lot of like weird little like deep, like deep comics jokes. Um, like there are there's things a, in there. Sorry, go on. Sorry. There's a panel with a joke about Stardust, the Super Wizard. Um, which is like a Fle- uh, Fletcher Hanks, um, Golden Age superhero right. um, <laughs> comic. It's lost on me, got to admit. Like in one um, thing, like in, villains who are going to steal from Earth turn off Earth's gravity, um, and so that they can go in and steal things. And like Stardust shrink the guy's entire body but keeps his head the same size throws him into space to go to a prison made of ice floating in space where, he, where he's got a big head <laughs> it's a it's that sounds acid, insane it's acid comics but not like acid comics like we'd get when people were actually doing acid uh, they just thought like, about what doing acid would be like and then made a comic yeah it's absolutely like it's 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 a it's a phantasmagoria it's along those similar lines where i think it kind of doesn't entirely work for me there's a lot of jokes and send-ups about the comic industry as a whole yes that considering who this is aimed at i yeah. feel is 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 missing its audience a bit like there are th- there are things in here about um a guy in a Oh, Basically, a, a guy in a suit yeah. inventing Superman, in effect, and um, a joke at the end about how it's impossible to break into comics. Um, yes, there's a watch, like a Watchman reference, and I just think that who's who's getting this? I mean, admittedly, I 34 am reading yes. this as well, <laughs> yeah, and getting them, but I also know that it's not like I'm not the primary primary target audience here. No, like, I, so, like, I've mentioned before that I quite like the original DR and Quench stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, I, I, I more or less quite enjoyed this. Um, there are a bunch of, like, decent gags, um, like, you know, Quench grabbing, um, the guy in the costume by accident. Yeah. Um, and, like, but. Yeah, it's like you say, it's not for the, like, all ages doesn't just mean kids. We should, like, it me it's meant to mean anyone can read this. And yeah. so, like, you do need things in there for, like, for a parent or for, like, an older sibling um, who might, you know, be helping, like, be reading it with the, like, with their brother or sister or like yeah. whatever. Um, and so like, but yeah, so much of this one, like you say, like even, even if I like it doesn't feel like it's, it's written with the, that audience in mind. It feels, yeah. Like you say that it's to maybe, too inside inside baseball and that might be rather than a fault of the story perhaps a fault of the characters in this hey. type of book <laughs> hey they're without they're without blemish no um i, I just mean that like, as you said you need to know a bit about them yeah then this this book being a volume one for trying to get a new audience maybe isn't the best place to to um, uh, to roll them out again I, I don't think that's the case. I do genuinely just think that it's what it's, it, it's some of the things about, yeah, like breaking in, like about like, you know, breaking into comics about like the, what they choose, some of what they choose to pastiche. And there are mm-hmm. kids gags in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there like, you know, there's, there's lots of little sort of like, Oh, that's a thing that a kid will a kid will get. Um, things, but yeah. Again, I I like this one enough. 
but yeah yeah it's it's i was a little i was a little bit let down if i was thinking this in if I was thinking about this in terms of where what it's meant to be doing sure um so I think that leaves us with just the future shocks and the there's other a, that, series there's a handful of other things um one thing which is original for regined uh which is finder and keeper which is yeah. two two issues of um they are written by Leah Moore and John Repion, art by David Tinto, colours on the first issue by Pippa Boland and on the second by Jim Boswell, letters uh, by Annie Parkhouse on the first issue and Simon Boland on the second. Mm-hmm. Obviously, these have no historic basis in 2000 yeah. AD at all. Uh, what did you make of these? These were the most not for me. Sure. Um, in here and like the most like for uh, for kids mm-hmm. like and I don't I, I honestly don't know um, <laughs> like they're per- they're probably they're, they're perfectly fine I think um, but that's kind of all I could really, all I could really say, I think, like they, they, they have the potential to actually do some fun, cool stuff and interest kids mm-hmm. um, in, like, uh, like folklore and mythology, yeah. and stuff like that, and that uh, that excites me quite a bit as as someone who loves studying that sort of stuff well Um, i think as well like horror and particularly as you say sort of folklore and folk horror are big parts of you know big boy 2000 ad yes um so i think it 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 makes sense to put something in here to sort of test that water for kids you know see if they're into it um it is a very light kind of ghost hunter a pair of teens find what do they get? Like a, a pair of goggles that can and see a, ghosts and, and a box that can catch them. Effectively a ghost trap. Um, and yeah, just sort of explores. They're, they're quite simplistic stories, aren't they? They don't have, yeah. they're not built on, you know, like um, aching tragedy and <laughs> those sort of things. <laughs> um, horrible murders and that sort of stuff. Um, I think the second story is a bit stronger than the first. Yes, has a bit absolutely. more of a, kind of through theme where the first is them finding the devices and sort of catching their first ghost without too much context or or this, reason in there this second one is them actually going out with it and trying to find something to do with them what can they actually like yeah and also solving the solving the problem without catching the ghost that's what i was going to say and that's what it makes me actually interested in it for a thing for kids Mm -hmm. is the fact that it's not just like oh they're gonna go out and catch all the ghosts it's no like no they're gonna learn about them yeah but broadly i'm in a similar camp to you i think yeah i don't i don't really buzz off the kind of iconography of horror so for horror to work for me it normally has to be pretty like scary has to be quite effective And when you get these kind of, um, I don't mean this to sound too derogatory, but sort of like play horror. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't do too much for me. Um, No, but again, like we're not, we're not the audience. Yeah, definitely. And I think the art's really nice. I think it's, uh, it looks good. It's also a very nice issue for um, like diversity of character. Mm. Um, I mean, I actually think this book isn't, bad for that at all um coming to america has kind of a a black female character and um as you say find a keeper a finder and keeper uh are both not white (laughs) characters uh, one female one male and i just think it's good to 
present it have a simple. range of, absolutely yeah. simple as that i don't know why anybody would have any sort of issue there um so i think it's really good for that reason i hope it's one that kids like but i mean yeah a similar, same like i'm in a similar I place to you. They, it's literally one where i could not tell you if they would or not mm-hmm. yeah um like and and to be fair at this i i hate to be the one to say it but we are old like we're in our 30s like and we can say what we think and kind of think back to would i have liked this as a kid yeah but i don't and really remember that to be honest no exactly so you only have an idea of that rather than an actual sort of real mm-hmm. sense of it like so i i i can say that like most most of the things in here i would have like did you ever like did did you ever sort of get any of the sort of like kids kids like um magazines as a kid like the kind of comics collections not like i don't mean like the beano or anything but like the 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 magazines some of which would try like uh one of the ones i can think of was like fbx uh, no, and no, I kind of missed that. out I, on those. I mean, I did, I did have the Beano for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and then my relationship was generally my mum going to a comic shop near where she worked and just buying whatever was in the bargain bin. Yeah. So I had a real, a real nice, uh, nice range of stuff. And it took me till much older to like narrow down my taste and sort yeah. of <laughs> figure out which bits yeah. I liked, which which I didn't. But I think something like this book as a whole yeah would have been excellent and, like, and the great part is with it being the anthology sort of format they've got a few things that they can always rely on mm-hmm. that you can generally say a kid is going like that i shouldn't say a kid is going to that 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 someone's going to like and yeah. then and that gives you the freedom to to take a chance on something like finder and keeper yeah um, or like the Gronk um, story and stuff like that, like that maybe you're not 100% certain is mm-hmm. going to catch. Um, so, yeah, it uh, it's so, just the... That's what's, it's just, what's good about these. It's a good test in bed and if you need new talent. and Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, uh, so just the future shocks left then. Yep. Yeah. The three future shocks, I'm just going to sort of group these together. So the future shocks yes. were written by Ned Hartley and Carl Stock, wrote the second and third. Art by Tanya Roberts, Brett Parson and Luke Horseman. Um, letters by Maz Smith, Simon Boland uh, and Annie Parkhouse. And colours by John Charles on one of them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, again, like much like I was just saying, the great thing with future shocks uh, is that they're just generally little what ifs? Yeah. Um, Twilight Zone ish. Yeah, O. Henry stories and stuff yeah. like so. Um, and 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 some of these don't feel unlike what you'd get in like maybe two out of three. Don't feel unlike what you'd get in the Beano. Yeah, agreed. Particularly um, that weird kid being based in school the, and... the yeah the kid and the minecraft one mm-hmm. um are ones that you know you could easily see um as gags in as like strips in the beano um and in that sort of way i i, I generally say yeah that's you know pretty pretty solid like mm-hmm. agreed i think they are yes yeah, solid little kind of gag stories yeah like one or two page the third one living your best life was my favorite of the three yeah and i yes. think for that reason it feels the most 2000 ad yes it's the most violent isn't what i mean but it's but it um, is i mean it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> I also, there's just little touches on it as well like the company i can't remember what the company's called that does this karma treatment but they have their own like judges yeah. That have oh, the spark- car that, yeah, have like very sparkly 
<laughs> sparkly armor and helmets. Yeah. And I just like the idea that like all companies have their own version of like, uh, well, their, their own pat- PMCs. Yeah, patented judges. Um. Yeah. I, I, again, like nothing much to say. Just, just like it's it's great to have something like this every every issue like much like in regular 2000 ad future shocks are a great little outlet for uh, like for a creative team who <laughs> just have a story idea that they can't necessarily find anywhere else yeah or um, definitely and that maybe a kid will, like might be the thing that catches the kid Mm-hmm, like definitely that catches a kid like to 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 go for it, like to go for it you know maybe they'll see like um the the dumb like minecraft jokes um or like the 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 funny like little guy who wants to go and be a dinosaur uh with like with guns for <laughs> arms and stuff um and yeah, go stuff. like yeah and go like oh right yeah no i i want to read this and then you know, discover something in there they really like. Yeah, I think it's a good branch for ages as well, because the sort of Beano, do they still make the Dandy? Or did that no, I, uh, uh, Dandy went a while ago. That's sad, but the um, I think there's a gap between the Beano and then everything yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. And I think this this fills that, fills that gap quite nicely. There's a few other sort of extra bits in there. There's a word search and a spot the difference. Um, a yeah, sort of un- Uncle Umps candy. Yeah, a kind of um, so, sort of story-driven board game puzzle. Yeah. Uh, Chet Jetstream um, by it's Henry like, Flint, who made that. Yeah, who is like a, a baboon in a spacesuit, uh, maybe a mandrill. Um, <laughs> to be specific. Yeah. I yeah, like again, it's a good package, and I don't think you'd be going very far wrong getting this um mm. for some for some kids like i could see this like being something that you know i'd if i'd have had it as a kid that would be fairly like dog-eared and i could have read it in the bath so it'd have been steamed to death <laughs> yeah. like all my old simpsons comics uh collections uh and stuff like so i i'd say overall it's pretty successful yeah like and i know that we both have a fondness for like some of the subject matter already. And so like there's a bu- bit of a bias there, but there's enough new stuff in here um, as well for us to be able to hopefully cast that off a bit and where our criticisms are that they come through as being like genuine. Yeah. Also, I'm confident that our taste is brilliant and everyone else should think what we think. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> I do want to give one little shout out to a one page vignette of Intestinauts. Oh, yes. Um, just because they've been running through other bits of 2000 AD and I just think yes. they are a, a great concept. Yeah, it's, it's very fun. But little pill robots that sort of fix the inside of people's stomachs and then get flushed down the loo and start again. Yep. Um, so uh yeah i i think that's all i've really got to say other than just like go get it if you got a kid absolutely as we say volume two and three are out uh and i think four will be will be coming forthcoming Um, yeah forthcoming nice uh i guess the only slight disappointment in the the format that it is they only come out four times a year in the actual 2000 ad if you are a kid that's quite a long time to wait between issues If you're not getting the mainline, God, mainline 2008D. I, I remember how long like the fortnightly wait was yeah. for like Simpson. Sorry for uh, Sonic the comic. It yeah. felt like an eternity. I'd go in every time my mum went to the shops. I'd go with her just to check if it had been long enough. <laughs> Is it today? Um, and like I never got them. I never got like a subscription because um, like affording it. But like. Um, I'd go up to the person like at the counter and be like, has it come in yet? And they'd be like, really sorry. It's not in two weeks. You absolute moron. No, it was um, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like 
it is a very long time to wait, but mm-hmm. hopefully I mean, go out and buy the volumes. I think that's the yeah, and and kids have video games, aren't they? They mm-hmm. they do things whilst they wait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> conquers. And, uh, and... They can play conquers or or play with do a, a hoop. do a hula hoop. Yeah, play with like a stick and ring. Yeah, uh, um, go and play poo sticks. <laughs> So these are things kids are into. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're down with the kids. <laughs> the Victorian kids. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Thank you for um get like introducing me to this. I had a really fun time. Cool. I'm glad you did. Um. Yeah. I enjoy these. I always look forward to the regene issues. So more. More. Are we going to? Uh, I think so. Are we going to try and? Wrap up. Yeah. What is it that he says? Do you want me to? Uh, can you get it? Can you get it all right? Yeah, I I think so. As about as all right as Zach normally gets it. Um, I, I sorry Zach. Um, I love you. We'll uh, be back again sometime soon in the next like couple of weeks, and we've got our roundup coming up at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we present all of our, like, our opinions on new number ones for the month this time of June, the month we're in. Um, <laughs> so uh, until then, remember that comics are bigger than capes. bigger than capes. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, there we go. And then. And then. <laughs>